Welcome to Pagan Coffee Talk, a traditional Wiccan podcast where we will discuss topics affecting the Pagan community from a traditionalist perspective. The topics we discuss are picked from our magical hat and the discussions are unscripted. The talks will be led by Lady Keegan, second degree priestess. She's joined by Lord Chase Knight Smith, elder and high priest of third degree. Pagan Coffee Talk is brought to you by Life Temple and Seminary. Welcome to Pagan Coffee Talk. I'm Keegan, and as always, Lord Knight. Okay, you ready for our topic? Yeah. <laughs> a witch's view on abortion. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. What's your view? Well, my view is... Let's think about this from the Celtic point of view <clears throat> or our tradition. Mm-hmm. Okay, because our tradition basically says that to make something holy or to mm-hmm. sacrifice, which means to make something holy, mm-hmm. that is an act of creation. Right. Right? Yep. Okay, which means anything that we create automatically becomes holy right from an anthem to a witch's ladder to herbs mixed together yeah all right now this sounds strange to go this way for abortion right not to me well no but (laughs) basically the the thought here is that because you are taking time to do something that that sacrifice of time and effort to do it is what makes these things holy. Okay. All right. So if that's true, then when a baby's made, you are actually making a sacrifice, which makes said infant holy. Okay. Because you're sacrificing 50% of your DNA, roughly, and the guy is sacrificing 50%. Okay. What? Sure, it's a sacrifice. Whatever you say. (laughs) Well, it was all he could do to give it up. (laughs) Well, we didn't, nobody said, you know, sacrificing something shouldn't be a little fun. (laughs) And that's the Celtic view. Yeah, or at least in our tradition, the way we interpret Celtic lore and myth. Make sense so far? Yeah. Well, you can go deeper into the Celtic part. I mean, all life was sacred, but all life was also needed. Yes. Now, don't get me wrong. Ages ago, yeah, did some tribes have to make hard decisions? Yeah. Ritual suicides existed. Fantaside existed. But again... This was, hey, we really don't have the resources to keep this child alive. We don't have the resources to keep this old man alive or this old woman alive. Right. So let's be realistic here, all right? This is not a problem we have nowadays. Mm -hmm. You're not going to go abort a baby because, well, you don't have enough food to eat to make the milk to feed the child. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, again, on the other hand, you know, my personal thought here is there's enough forms, there's enough different forms of birth control to where I don't think abortions should be happening as much as they can. Abortion shouldn't be used as a form of birth control. Birth control. Which I'm, I'm afraid everybody is actually doing because when you look at the percentage of People, you know, who get raped and actually get pregnant. And don't get me started on the incest thing, all right? Right. If that's really going on and that's what you want to do, fine, whatever, no kink shame. Right. <laughs> but, you know, if you're being so stupid to not do birth control because you don't want a baby and you wind well, up with one. What about you're on birth control, but it just didn't work? 
Well, I mean, if it didn't work or anything like that, or you think there might have been an accident, there's the plan B. What if, say you're on the pill and you're taking an antibiotic, didn't even realize that they counter affect the birth control pill. And well, I mean, uh, so does some antidepressant medicine. Oh, sure. You know, again, this is your responsibility to talk to your pharmacist about what interactions might happen. Personal responsibility. Ability. Oh, yeah, personal responsibility. I mean, you know, that's like, you know, just because you're on the pill doesn't mean you still can't look at your partner going, hey, wrap that sucker. Right. Neither one of these are 100%. Most of them get, what, that 99%? Oh, I think condoms are 97. Right. But again, together. He's a Fort Knox. Yeah, you're control. talking. <laughs> right. I mean, there's ways around this. Layers. Layers. You know, I mean, don't get me wrong. And when we're talking about kids, abstaining is 100% sure. Right. It is. But our philosophy is we would rather our kids know and not do. Instead of do, because, you know, and wind up in a situation where they should have known. Well, leaving kids out of it, just adults. Just I adults. In the witch's world, abstaining is unrealistic. Well, in our tradition, sex is a part of what we do. It's what we talk about. It's not something to be shunned. No. No, we don't ignore it. No. We don't ignore sex in our religion about, a, you know, about what in the world really goes on. We're not ignoring it. No. But I don't think we're like, oh, here it is the center of our lives either. No. I know some people have this viewpoint of our religion and think, okay, well, all they're doing is orgies. <laughs> I mean, it's basically the same thing you, you know, you hear about gays. I mean... If I did like all they said, you know, hell, that's all I would do all the time. Especially if you gay witch, my God. Yeah, I know. But it ain't that way. And this is an act. It's just like anything else in life. You have to do it with some responsibility. Sure. I don't have a problem with the the day after pill. Accidents happen. But, you know, you're sitting there waiting until the last trimester to get an abortion Wait a minute. You know, this isn't like, oops, hey, I just found out. Right. right. <laughs> you know, it's not that. And now, and like in the case of rape, I'm along the lines of women should call the police as soon as they can, as soon as they're safe after the event. You know, when you're talking about rape, I think you're talking, you're opening a whole new can of worms here because there's trauma. Yes, there's, they should. A you want that guy to be stopped. Yeah. Yes, there is trauma and stuff like that, but by calling in, you can get that help. You right. can and get examined. You're going to go, they're, they're going to take you to the hospital. The nurses are probably going to give you a plan B pill just to be on the safe side. Or offer it to you, maybe. Offer it to you. Rape is a crime in the United States. By not calling the police and getting charges done, regardless if you got a good chance or if you don't, you got a better chance if they can get DNA samples and stuff like that right then. But that's using a lot of logic. And when you go through, and not from personal experience, but right. I would assume when you go through something that traumatic, maybe you're not always thinking logically, you know? No, but, you know, it seems like you would call a friend. Something. Call you a know. friend. Grab a gun. Whatever. Right. Well, and, and I'm still back to, hey, you know, women need to learn and should be taught in schools as just part of the thing. Everybody should be taught self-defense. I believe women should carry guns because you do have guys that are bigger and stronger than them. Well, along those lines, and I agree with that, absolutely, but shouldn't. Right. Mental health also be taught because rape, from my understanding, is a mental problem that the yes. rapists have or some shit they say. Yeah. 
So and again, and again, I'm not sitting here and expecting anybody to handle them. I guess my point there is I don't expect anybody to go, yeah, okay, it ain't that big of a deal, and walk off. Yeah, it is a big deal. Yeah, call the police. You can get counseling. You can get people to help you with that psychological part. Yeah. By ignoring it or not doing it because ooh, you're afraid you're going to be trashed, to me, it seems a little stupid. Yeah. I could be wrong there. To me, I, I would look at any woman in that fashion and go, no, you need to tell. We need to yeah. call it. If one of my people called me up, if one of my women called me up and go, hey, I was raped. I need spiritual. I'm going to be there for them, but I'm also going to be encouraging, no, we need to call the police right now. Uh, yeah. No, and I don't think that people, I mean, when you talk about views of abortion, the first thing people will tend to say, because it, I'm pro-life, so and the first thing that I hear is, what if they were raped? Okay, can we see the statistics on women who were raped and have an abortion and women who get an abortion willy-nilly because it was an accidental pregnancy? Right. I believe the stats are a lot higher. Right. I, I think because of the trauma and stuff that the likelihood of a woman getting pregnant is less. Does it happen? Yes. Does that make sense? With rape? Yeah. It I don't does think happen. it matters if you're being raped or not. Whatever your chances to getting pregnant is the same. Well, no, I think during the stress of getting raped, the, your emotions high, hormones <laughs> are going all over the place because it is traumatic, right? Because mm -hmm. you're going through a flight or fright thing. So more than likely, what little bit of, uh, little bit of testosterone women do happen to uh, produce is probably heightened during those times which is actually going to make it harder for them to get pregnant. It doesn't mean I, it don't happen. Are you with me? Yeah. It just means it's a little bit harder to get pregnant. I wouldn't have a clue. I don't know. Well, I don't either. I mean, I'd have to look that up a little bit more, but it just seems like the hormonal and everything going on would make it harder. Not unlikely, but. All you right. Know. Well, let's look. Let's look at it this side. Why should that baby suffer because you were raped? Well, I was raped. It was traumatic, and I don't want to carry it, and it's a bad reminder. So what did the baby do? True. Why are we killing this innocent because you have a mental problem because you were raped? I hate that for you, and you need help. But what did the innocent do? Why should Nothing. he die Nothing, for his father's then, sins? But then on the other hand, you don't have you're, – you're a 100% normal female. Right, you're a normal woman, yeah. and you get raped. Right mm -hmm. now, let's flip this on its head because you know how I like to do this. Yeah. All right, because the guy's raping you, and you do wind up pregnant. What mental problems might he have that he just passed on to that kid? I don't think there's a rape gene. Well, I don't think there's a rape gene, but could that child have other dis? you know, disassociated problems and stuff like that. Well, any time you get pregnant, at any you run a risk. You run at risk. Yes, you do. You run that risk. There's I mean, no I can't do something so, to get to justify it. Well, like I said, you know, my only justification there and is I really like the plan B. I do not I don't like this, hey, within the first trimester. I definitely don't like it. The second trimester, or the and especially all the way to the third trimester. You, you mean murder? Right. To me, if it's something like this where it's an accident or rape or something like that, I'd rather see that plan B pill as a form of birth control than yeah. you going to go have this procedure done. The murdering of the baby. Right. Yeah. There is a certain point to where you're kind of like, ah, yeah. But again, my, my point there is still there's enough forms of birth control, right, that if they're mm -hmm. done properly and like they're supposed to be, that you preventing yourself from getting pregnant is there. If <laughs> guys aren't ready, use condoms. If you're still that concerned about it, go talk to your doctor. See about a vasectomy, especially if it's easier for a guy to get that undone later. 
Well, I don't know, but I do know that the procedure for the vasectomy is a lot uh, easier. Yes. Less risk. Right. Oh, yeah. Less risk. Mm -hmm. Right. I, like I said, there's enough form of birth control there that I don't believe we should be having as many abortions as we do now. And the only reason I don't want to take it off the counter is if, for some reason, the mother's in distress. To where in the world the doctor actually comes in and says, okay, we don't do nothing, we'll lose both. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, got to do something. So, you're making that line, though, between a, an abortion and a medical termination. Right. I'm, I'm making that to where in the world, yeah, if a doctor's sitting there, that a doctor shouldn't get arrested because he's having to sit there and make a choice of either I lose both or I save one or the other. I'm mm. making that choice of sitting there going, okay, if I don't do anything, both of them's going to die. Even if I left the baby alone and didn't try to do this, it won't survive outside. But it's going to die anyway because the mom's going to die. Right. But if I kill the baby, if I get rid of the baby at this point, and I did say, let me go ahead and say, kill the baby and all that, I can save the mom. Right. To me, this is a logical choice. Because, again, a woman gets into an accident because you're more likely to get into a car accident than you are anything else. Well, there's there's tons of stuff that could possibly right. happen. Right. But in that emergency situation, okay, you're in your first trimester. This baby's not going to survive outside the womb. And to sit there and going, okay, but abortions are illegal, but if I do this abortion, I'm going to lose both. Right. Well, there's And for the pro-life side, to me, this is a little asinine because I can get rid of the baby. I can actually kill the baby, save the mom. Because otherwise, there's no other choice. If I remove the baby to try to save it, it's going to die anyway because it's not developed enough. Right. But if I leave the baby in, the mom's going to die and the baby's going to die anyway. Now, that is not, I woke up, found out I was pregnant. Oh, right. my God, let me run and get an abortion. This is an act of uh, the right. gods of, of God help dad for making the decision who's going to live. Right. That is um, beyond our yeah. control. Right. I'll, I'll say this right now is men, even me as a gay man, have this part of our brain that we want to protect women. Yes. Y'all are good at it, too, by the you way. You know, yeah. I mean, so for men to sit there and for a guy to sit there in this situation going, I no, save my wife. Mm -hmm. That's his priority. Yeah. Because, yeah. again, his, his thought is, hey, we can always do this again and try again, but I can't do that if she's dead. Right. And finding a good wife or mother and stuff like that is not always the most easiest thing to do. Especially today. I know. <laughs> they're all on TikTok or something. Yeah. I don't know where they're at. Uh, yeah, they got fans-only accounts. Yeah, that's what you want in a mom. Right. <laughs> Nothing says nurturing like fans only. You know, your kid's going to school. Hey, you know, here's a picture of my mom when she was on her, uh, you know, fans only pages showing her dance move on the stripper pole. <laughs> this is great. Is abortion murder? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Because, I mean, here's my point is we wait in my mind, and I could be wrong. Wouldn't be the first time. But. <laughs> You know, I believe there are certain older souls or certain souls with enough wisdom that to bring us to the next level spiritually and all that. But those souls require, I guess, a certain, you might want to say a certain genetic component to it. Mm -hmm. The body has to be able to house that soul. Okay. And without that housing, it's almost like going around. If you think about it like this, if souls are, let's say, radioactive, right? Okay. Just bear with I me here. You. Okay? And that if the body cannot contain that energy the way it's supposed to, it's going to leak out. Might even affect the body itself or the person or people around them. Okay. 
But yet we keep on doing all these abortions and all the good genetics keep on getting aborted. Yeah. So yet we don't have, so we haven't had that big guru in so long because we've took it in our hands to decide what will be born and what won't, what will live and what won't. Yeah, we'll decide you, that. We'll decide that even though we don't have a clue on what genetics it takes to house right. that. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that. That's okay. We'll make those That's okay. decisions. We'll, we'll make those decisions. We're spiritual enough to do yeah. that now. What's the worst that can happen? When do you think this soul is part of the body? At conception? <sighs> at the heartbeat? At breath? Our tradition says that breath, at the first breath, is when the soul permanently <laughs> becomes bonded to a body. Mm. I, I have a theory. All right. I, I said it becomes permanently bonded to the body. Yeah, I heard you. All right. Now, does the soul, while the baby's being grown, come in and out and maybe do other things or spend more time there? The older it gets, the closer it gets to birth? Yes. Yeah, I think we've talked about that before. Right. I mean, because... Getting used to the body. Letting the body get used to it. Right. I mean, it's kind of like building a house. You know, if you're building a house, you're going to go every so often and check up on it during its progress. Right. I think souls do this the same way. Hey, this is my house. I'm going to check up on it. How's its development going? (laughs) Yeah, that makes sense, though. I like that. Right. And that is not necessarily there all the time, but... Well, you know, I think the problem with abortion for me is not, oh, you know, you have an abortion and now you've killed a soul. That ain't the problem for me. Now, again, you haven't killed the soul because that's a little. You can't. Well, I don't want to say you can. It's just. We ain't getting that that deep. We're not getting in that. We're not going there yet. Not going there. (laughs) Uh, Probably never will go there. So don't even ask. Uh, So for today. They cannot be destroyed, and we're going to move on. (laughs) (laughs) But, again, that genetics for that one great soul that comes along to teach us or to advance humanity, at this point, might have tried multiple times to reincarnate. But every time they do, they get used to the body, and then somebody goes, well, nope, we're going to get an abortion instead. Uh, so th- they're killing Jesus, is what you're saying? To a certain extent, they're yeah. Killing second coming, the right? Messiah. I mean, you could theoretically, yes. You um, know, and, and even then, you still have the. Here's my other problem with abortion, which I've been thinking about. But still, could be wrong. Is what happens to that soul that's been going in and out and trying to reincarnate, but yet? the body that there's best suited for them, the mom decided to have an abortion and now has to take whatever comes next. You mean settle? Yeah, settle. Could this, and then you have that whole entire cycle because we believe the reincarnation cycle works. You're first like, you're like male, then you become female, then you become male again, then you go back to female, back and forth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, not even sure which it's been going on for so long, nobody knows which way started first. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Could this also be these people now that we're seeing that are having supposedly trans issues? Trans issues. <laughs> that this the, that these because you were supposed to be a woman, they've had that abortion, and now you're thrown into a man. Yeah. Why not? Could that not cause these issues of, hey, I'm really a woman in a man's body or I'm a man in a woman's body? You well, know, in that case, not, you kind of go, well, you really are, actually. You really are. But then on the other hand, we also look at the body like, you know, shirts, and that just happens to be what in the world you got on. So you can't change that i'm sorry you don't like yellow maybe next time you can get your favorite color but today your shirt is yellow so deal with it. right so yeah. deal with it yeah you know i mean the fact is in our heads it's irrelevant yeah 
but with meditation every day and all this, I think the brain will work through those issues. Well, the same could be said for the woman who's has a unwanted pregnancy. Meditate. Maybe you'll learn to love it. Maybe. You know, I've seen meditation solve a lot of problems. Getting moms to communicate with the soul going into the baby that they are creating right now seems to be a difficult task. You don't like doing it. Right. Right. (laughs) And I don't know why. It's because you haven't experienced it. But uh, not in this life anyway. Say la vie. Uh, nobody ever listens to me. <laughs> I, I do. I mean, 90% of the time. <laughs> 97% of the time. <laughs> 97%. That's right. <laughs> it just happens to be that good information is that 3% that I missed. <laughs> That's just my view on it. I mean, if you're looking at it from a spiritual point of view, my point is, is, yeah, if it's rape and the, the baby being born, yeah, that could be the next great spiritual leader. I wonder we've been waiting so long. Yeah, right. Um, but given that, given rape aside and the complications in general. Right. Abortion is frowned upon, at least with uh, us. Oh, right. And as far as I will go down that path is maybe the day after pill. Yeah. You know, the plan B. Me and my husband were going at it really hard. And even though I took my birth control pill, the, you know, the, the condom broke. So therefore, hey, let's be on the safe side. Right. We were drinking. We had fun and all this. But, oops. you know, oops, it happens. Yes. But again, when I say financially stable enough to do that, I'm talking like borderline, hey, we're about to live in a ditch. Destitute. Right. Yeah. And I don't get me wrong. I still believe that families need help with their kids. I don't have problems with like the WIC and Medicaid and Medicare for kids. Oh, God, no. You know, I'd rather have the kids and do the support that's needed and for them to get what in the world they need. There's no reason in the United States any kid should go to bed hungry. Absolutely not. You know, and I will even go, and it still baffles me why in the world kids have to pay for school lunches. No, oh, it's for, because for the country's as, messed up. For as much money as we pay in taxes, lunch should be free for all school kids. Uh, they're children. They're children. That should not be something that they're worried about. Oops, I forgot my lunch money. No, if they or have I lost money. money. Right. Or I lost my lunch money. They even have they if the parents even have no, their children, that shouldn't even be a question. It shouldn't be up for discussion. Of course no. the food's free. The food's free. Free lunch, free breakfast. You show up, you just ask. All kids. We're already planning on all the kids getting fed. What food's left over goes to the homeless. It's a good idea. I don't really care. You know, at some point or another, people got to wake up. They're children. They're children. We like our children. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we like our children. Yeah, we, we get a little. Mm. <laughs> yeah. We get detective over the children. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's true. It's true. Don't kill them. And feed them after they're born. I don't think these are hard ideas to get a hold of. No. Why are we going to court over this? Why are we going to laws over this? Why is there well, legislation about this? This is common sense to me. Well, and again, I mean, as far as the abortion thing, I mean, I know it's legal and it's not probably going to become illegal anytime soon or anything like that. I would just rather see it go to the wayside by the fact of nobody needs it anymore. Nobody's doing it anymore. Right. Yes. It's unnecessary. It, it bothers me to see women get up there and go, oh, I had an abortion. You know, I wish I'd had an unpregnant, you know, just to have an abortion so I could say I did it. What? Yeah, it's a rite of passage. It's what we do. Got to get that's that done. What, what? Okay, that's messed up. Yeah. Yeah, it is. 
that to me uh, makes me wonder about our society. <laughs> Lots of things make me wonder about our society. Killing children is right up top of the list. Yes. But again, you know, I like the plan B if needed. Yeah, I don't have a problem with plan B. And again, yeah, I think we ought to encourage kids to be more. Is the thought there that, you know, like I learned from my grandparents, prepare for the worst, but hope for the best? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You tell your kids, hey, this is what you got to do. And you got to be responsible. I would rather you not participate until you like you're married or you're old enough to do it. But for the love of God, God, here's some responsibility. You have to know what you're doing. You have to know to be safe. You have to know what can happen. Well, again, this is where we have this problem, especially like with boys of fathers being able to communicate with their sons on certain levels without being embarrassing, without feeling like they're being embarrassed. Right. To me, that's just kind of stupid. If you're too embarrassed to look at your kid and go, hey, here in the world's how you figure out what size condom you need. This is how in the world it's going to feel when you put it on. This is how you're going to put it on and use it. I'm glad I'm not a man. I'm glad that's well, not my responsibility in this well, house. I, mean, I think women should have the same responsibilities to their daughters, to look at their daughters and go, hey. I mean, but that's a little bit, boy, it's a little bit easier for me in my head for women. I because when you're, problems. right, because when your daughter starts to do something, she's going to come to you. It's not like something she's going to be able to hide. Right. With boys, they're going to be able to hide that for a little bit. I think parents do need to talk to their kids. Right. You know, so again, you know, when your kid's getting 10 or 11 years old, set them aside and go, hey, you know what? You're going to go through some changes and eventually this is going to happen. When this this actually happens, go to your dad and wake him up and talk to him about it. Right. You know, don't hide it. Don't be ashamed or anything like that. And get information about... Not just the internet, not just your friends. Get some honest no. information here. <laughs> Real life information. Real life. Not your friend that sits there and tells you if you perform oral sex with a woman long enough, your beard will start to come in. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Get get honest advice. Yeah. That was something I remember one of my schoolmates saying in like the lunch line one day, and I'm looking at him going, what? <laughs> sounds like something a woman made up. It sounds like some junior high kid made up. <laughs> a female. Boy, I know, a guy. You don't know, look at you. <laughs> I, I could say it again. I could see guys saying that. Yeah. But I've never understood that issue with parents and their kids. Because it's uncomfortable. Well, you know what's more uncomfortable? Hey, mom, guess what? (laughs) Susie here happens to be, you know. (laughs) Now, I'm, and I'll say, I want to be able to say, I did everything in my power to make my children's lives go as productive as possible. Well, see, and again, I don't think this information is dangerous, like some people would say, you know, that this encourages kids. I think if parents are honestly teaching their kids morals and ethics, it's not a problem. If you're instilling those morals and ethics into your kids, it doesn't become a problem. And stuff happens. And stuff happens. So if you talk to your kid, your kid's going to know, I can go to mom and I can go to dad. Right. If I do do this, there is an accident, there is a problem, and my girlfriend does wind up pregnant, I know I can go to them without being chastised. Right. And we'll figure something out. But now again, here's my problem with the abortion. Here's one other problem I have with the abortion. And everybody's sitting there going, well, that just means they're going to go out and have illegal abortions. Right? Yeah. In back alleys, and then you're going to have more women dying. Well, that's not exactly true either. Now, back in the 30s, right, 40s, mm-hmm. 
yeah. 50s and on up to like what about the 60s or 70s or stuff yeah you getting pregnant unwed oh yeah your parents would have kicked you out or send you somewhere far far off yeah it literally would have ruined your life yeah but being an unwed mother nowadays that ain't that big of a deal there's no stigma there there's no shame right parents don't i don't think parents kick their kids out of the house anymore just because they're pregnant i have no idea no i mean all the girls i know and stuff like that that did i, I didn't see their parents like okay well you've just shamed the whole entire family <laughs> and we're going to disown Shame. you i mean growing up right because to me right. this only happened to gay kids yeah this is when your family would kick you out because well this is the way they are well you know if you want to go to the back alley because it's legal and you know there's risk of the mother dying i'll quote ethan lane right now in the bird cage and say let him go down with the ship i say yeah <laughs> I know, as far as that goes but i mean for the reason I mean, the reason these women were having illegal abortions back in the 30s and the 40s and wasn't I don't want the child or I want the child. It's I'm unwed Hi. and people and I'm not going to be able to find jobs. I mean, am I making sense? Yeah, that? you are. You are. It's you're a different not gonna, right. You're not going to have that desperate girl going, well, you know, I'm you're not going to get a job or blah, 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 because I'm pregnant now. So right. let's go get this abortion. Yeah. It's because that. Right. Because that's no longer a problem nowadays. Girls still go to school pregnant. Oh, yeah. I went to school with pregnant women, all girls all the time. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like it was in the 50s and stuff to where you suddenly dropped out of school and then you got married to the kid that, you know, to the little boy that knocked you up and neither one of y'all know you're from a hole in the ground. No, <laughs> no it's different time. It's a different time. So that excuse to me is completely gone now because there's no shame about being a single mom or being unwed when pregnant you know having right. a baby out of wedlock yeah that shame isn't there that shame's not there uh -uh. i think actually i think this is the statistics that i saw said that most couples are foregoing marriage just living together and having their family that way but i mean again that's a whole argument on marriage which we might actually have to do a podcast on <laughs> Remind me to write that down somewhere. All right. Like I said, these are not issues like there were back in the 30s and 40s and 50s while abortion was still illegal. Right. But now I look at it nowadays, and we're not even having enough babies in the United States to replace everybody. Do we want to? There's a good question. And people waiting longer to have babies. Well, they got to get their career finished first, Lord Knight. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, let's. There are other questions there. Big can of worms. Huge. Big can of wor worms. Huge. So, I think I'm about out of coffee, and you? Oh, yeah, I'm out of coffee. All right. Well, I guess until next week. Okay. I will talk later. Thank you for listening to Pagan Coffee Talk. I hope you join us next week. We travel down this trodden path, a maze of stone and mire. Just hold my hand as we pass by a sea of blazing pyres. And so it is the end of our days, so walk with me till morning breaks. And so it is the end of our days, so walk with me till morning breaks.